Nikon just released firmware update 2.0 for the Nikon Z8. There are a dozen of improvements, but in this video I will test out the main ones, you know, the, the really strong ones that make the Z8 almost like a Z9. First of all, the Z8 received pixel shift photography, which means that the camera takes a series of shots, changing the position of the sensor pixel by pixel. This results in less noise and resolution can go up to 180 megapixels. Then I will test the newly added bird detection autofocus option, so bird photographers can actually make use of their beautiful Nikon telelenses. And the Z8 also received the auto capture feature with which the camera can automatically take photos based on predefined conditions. Let's start with the pixel shift. In the photo menu go down to the bottom and here you can select off or on for a single photo or on for a series of photos. Then you can choose how many photos the Z8 should take. 4 and 8 photos will improve color and noise performance, but with the original 46 megapixel resolution. Then the 16 and 32 frame options will result in 180 megapixel resolution files, but you will have to put them together on the computer, the body only gives you the raw files. Then you can set the delay time, basically how many seconds the camera should wait after the shutter button is pressed. And optionally, you can also tell the Z8 how much it should wait between frames, but I don't see any point setting this anything else than zero. My recommendation is that you assign pixel shift photography to one of the function buttons if you use it often. For example, I assigned it to this button. And thank God you don't have to press the shutter button 32 times. The Z8 will do this by itself. So this pixel shift technology isn't something that Nikon invented, Olympus had it for years, Sony also had it for years, it's just Nikon introduced it I think to the ZF first and now it's also in the Z8. First let's see the pixel shift photography on a completely still subject. This is one of the beautiful buildings under the Buddha castle in Budapest, Hungary. With 8 frame pixel shift under normal circumstances and low ISO, you don't see much difference between a singular and the merged photo. However, it gets different if the image is pushed up in post and therefore it gets noisier. Now there is a marked difference in terms of signal to noise ratio, a lot more detail and color is there with much less noise. As always, you can download many of these raw photos so you can pixel peep for yourself. Let's see the 32 frames merged together. Here you can clearly see the difference in terms of detail richness. But this increased detail in itself doesn't justify the extra time it takes to, to make these merged files. However, if it's a noisy scene, then the difference is huge. Just look how much more detail the merged version has and also a significantly less noise compared to the normal raw photo. By the way, I shot this from the walls of Buddha Castle and you can see the parliament and the chain bridge from here. Unfortunately, this scene reveals a big problem with pixel shift. Most of the scene is still, but you can see at those parts where the cars are moving, pixel shift gave terrible results. Look at this colorful, weird pattern here, it, it's just ugly. I don't even know how I would get rid of that. So I tested the pixel shift feature at night as well with long exposures, hoping that maybe the long exposures will help uh, smooth things out and I will not get this colorful artifact thing. That's the fisherman's bastions over the Danube, I'm standing next to the parliament in Budapest and from here there are plenty of moving parts on the frame. Although the resolution and noise performance gets better, it just cannot handle moving parts. Even the waving Danube gets this ugly colorized artifact look, not to mention the light trail of the ships. This pixel shift technology is just not usable if anything is moving on the frame. So for landscape photographers, I don't know if it's gonna be that useful. Maybe for, for still photographers? 
Let me know what you think in the comments. So how to put these raw photos together? For this, you have to use Nikon's NX Studio software to merge the pixel shift shots together. Just click on the folder of the source files and you will see that pixel tag under the photos. By the way, these are completely normal raw files that can be edited in Lightroom just like any other files. But if you want them merged, then you will have to use this Nikon NX Studio. So just click on the pixel shift icon here and then the software will list all the sequences within that folder and you can pick which one it should merge. Once done with the merging, it creates an NEFX file and luckily you can filter for that in the software. So these files are, are huge. The 180 megapixel file is almost a gigabyte big, 960 megabytes, while the 46 megapixel ones are around 250 megabytes big. So as I'm doing this review in February 2024, unfortunately Adobe Lightroom, although it can read the NEFX files, it crops into them. So I, I had to use Nikon's NX Studio for editing these photos. I hope that Adobe will fix this soon. Now let's see the bird autofocus. So in the autofocus settings, now in the AF subject detection options, you also have birds, finally. And then the Nikon Z8 automatically finds the eyes of the birds really, really well, even through the fence. Uh, if there are many birds, then with the joystick, you can jump between the eyes of the different birds. Overall here, it really did a good job. And don't forget that I was shooting through a densely woven fence here. As you can see, the birds in the background here was already almost in focus. So the camera focused on their eyes. But if I wanted to have the focus on the birds, on the bird closer to me, then I had to use some manual focusing. So I had to rotate the focus dial of the lens and now uh, the focus changed to the bird which, which was closer to me. This is another example with a goose almost next to the fence. I was surprised that, uh, that the Z8's autofocus wasn't confused um, because of the fence. It tracked the eyes really, really well and all the shots that I got from here were perfectly sharp. I was really surprised by this white bird because the, the bird was actually walking away from me and it still dragged its head and I, <laughs> I only took one shot and still it was perfectly in focus. This was a bit surprising for me. Of course, I can limit the area where the camera is trying to find the eyes, so I can use this um, custom AF area. And now the Z8 will only attempt to find the eyes, eyes within that red square, and, but it's going to track it all along the whole frame. And of course, I can move this red square area anywhere I would like to with the joystick. And the Z8 is going to attempt to find the eyes only within that red square. To be honest, the performance of the Nikon Z8 is extremely similar or, or the same level with the entry-level Canon R bodies like Canon R10 that I've tested one and a half a year ago. So Nikon really had to catch up with Canon and Sony and, I, and I'm happy that they did a really good job. As you can see, the Z8 found focus on these crowds very far away in the distance. I was surprised that it found them and I was also surprised that when the crows started to fly, the camera tracked them pretty well. And of course you also have this bird IAF option if you are taking a video. And it works exactly like that. It gave me good results. I know that there is nothing new here, but I also had to test the animal IAF of the Nikon Z8 on this llama. And I have to tell you, it found the eyes of the llama really, really well, and all the shots were perfectly focused. And now about the auto capture function. So in this mode, you can tell the camera take photos automatically without you having to press the shutter button if certain conditions are met. You can set subject detection, motion, or you can set subject distance, or the combination of these three. 
For example, here I set it to subject detection, human uh, face, but this is where it gets confusing. You can pick the area and at first I thought that these red areas mean, like th this is the target area, Nikon says, it means a camera is going to get triggered if the subject is within these area. But no, 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 no. These red areas mean that this is excluded. So if the subject is here, the camera will not take photos. And I think Nikon should make a better job explaining this here on the screen. This red area is actually where the camera will not try to find the subject. I think this function is excellent for sports photographers where they can install many, many cameras onto different places and they don't have to operate them manually. And it's also good for maybe for wildlife photographers who can just leave the camera in the hide. Still, Nikon should definitely be clearer about these target areas. So again, this here in red, this is the exclusion. The camera will not try to find the subject in these areas. So what do you think about the Nikon Z8 firmware 2.0? How do you like it? Do you have a Nikon Z8? Let me know uh, how are you going to use it. And as always, see you soon and all the best from Hunter.